Canada gives travel advisory to her citizens days after U.S. did same to her own citizens. NLC TUC vow to begin strike on Tuesday, 14th of November, as a fallout to the assault on Nigeria. And of course, don't forget that we are also going to be looking at the headlines on Off the Press as a segment on the show this morning. Good morning and welcome to the program. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's a pleasure having you this Wednesday morning. Uh, we do hope that you are not finding it difficult getting from one point to the other. And for those who were afraid that the Third Mainland Bridge might be a hindrance to their movement, we see now that it doesn't have to be that way because uh, if your movement is between uh, 5 a.m., for instance, or 4.30 a.m. Uh, till uh, 11.30, then you're safe because whatever repairs will be done will be done um, after that. That is 12 midnight to 4 a.m. Okay, so we're, we're looking at a, a lot of issues this morning, and majorly the ones that we just uh, told you about. And one of them is what we uh, intend to bring to you as one of the trending issues. NLC TUC declare nationwide strike from November 14. We've been talking about this all the while. But we need to re-emphasize what is really happening and how it's going to have an impact on our economy. The leadership of the Nigerian Labor Congress, that is NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, have declared a total nationwide strike effective next Tuesday, November 14, 2023. The leadership of the two unions reached their resolution after an extraordinary National Executive Council meeting in Abuja on Tuesday, November 7. The labor unions had vowed to go on strike to protest the assault on the NLC National President Joe Ajayro in Imo State on November 1. The labor unions had accused the Imo State government and the State Police Command of orchestrating the assault on Ajayro, who was in the state to coordinate a protest over the non-payment of uh, workers by the Imo State government. Last Friday, the organized labor handed the federal government a five-day ultimatum to replace the police commissioner while also blaming Governor Hope Uzodima, who is seeking re-election for the attack on Ajayro. Governor Uzodima has since denied any involvement in the attack on the labor leader. The organized labor also demanded the arrest and prosecution of some of the governor's aides and threatened to embark on a nationwide industrial action if their demands were not carried out. Already, the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Ebuetoku, on Sunday redeployed Bade for neutrality's sake ahead of the November 11, 2023 governorship election in Imo State. Well, we hope that we are going to hear the last of these. Um, uh, going on strike at this moment, 14th of November. Let's see what will happen between now and the 14th of November. Uh, this government has been known to be swift in uh, taking decisions and uh, also trying to lobby people to their side. And Labour has also been part of this when they have been convinced time and time again to shit their swords and do what they're supposed to do and not go on strike. We'll, let's see what happens between now and Tuesday next week. That's about six days. Okay, appeal court sacks PDP senator declares Lalong winner. The Minister of Labor, Simon Lalong, winner of the Plateau South Senatorial election, has been declared winner of Plateau North Senatorial election by a court of appeal sitting in Abuja. Lalong had asked for the nullification of Napoleon Bali of the People's Democratic Party's victory in the election on the grounds that the party did not have a proper party structure and therefore could not file candidates for the elections. A tribunal led by Justice Mohammed Tukur had also ruled in favor of Lalong, stating that the PDP had no structure and also lacks the right to take part in the election. A three-man panel of the appeal court led by Justice Alfreda Williams Dawodu on Tuesday, November 7, upheld the tribunal's judgment, adding that the matter was both a pre- and post-election matter and that the tribunal was correct to have looked at the issue. We also have uh, information that Banky W. Obanikoro lose out as appeal court affirms Labour Party's Tadiu Zata as a Tiosa House of Rep member. 
Uh, the Labour Party, LP House of Representatives member representing a Chiosa federal constituency of Lagos State, Tadius Ata, has reclaimed his seat in the Green Chamber. Recall that Lagos State National and State House of Assembly Election Petition Tribunal sitting in Ikeja, Lagos State, in August annulled the February 25, 2023 election of Ata. The court ordered INEC to conduct a supplementary election in the 32 polling units of Etiosa within 90 days and withdraw the return certificate issued to Atar to con and conduct elections in areas where the election wasn't held on February 25. Dissatisfied by the judgment, Atar approached the Court of Appeal and was able to reclaim his mandate. The Labour Party governorship candidate in Lagos State, Badebo Roads Vivo, announced uh, Atar's victory at the Court of Appeal. At the February 25 election, Atta contested the election against singer Bank KW of the PDP and Babajide Obanikoro of the APC. Atta won with 24,075 votes, while Bank KW came second with 18,666 votes, and Obanikoro was declared third with 16,901 votes. Lagos governorship election and appeal court uh, reserves judgment in Badebo Road survival versus Songolu's case. Uh, that is the state and national appeal court sitting in Lagos on Tuesday, yesterday, November 7, reserved ruling in the appeal filed by the Labour Party and the People's Democratic Party PDP against the re-election of Governor Babajide Songolu. The Labour Party candidate Badebo Road Survivor and Abdulaziz Adediron of PDP are challenging the September 25 ruling of the election tribunal which upheld the March 18 re-election of Songolu. At the hearing of the appeal on Tuesday, the lead justice Yagata Nimpar reserved ruling after listening to the argument of the parties. Justice Nimpar said the date for judgment would be communicated to the parties. Earlier, counsel to Labour Party, Mr. Benson Olagwadi, urged the court to allow the appeal and set aside the decision of the tribunal. According to him, the tribunal erred in law when it held that the burden of proof of specific oath of allegiance subscribed to by Hamzat, as well as the evidence of his renounced citizenship, rests on the appellant. He urged the court to interpret section 182, subsection 1a of the constitution regarding the disqualification of Somulu and his deputy, Dr. Ha Kadiri Hamzat. And responding, Mr. Wole Olani Perkun, counsel to Lagos government, or governor rather, Somulu, and his deputy Hamzat urged the court to dismiss the appeal. Olani Perkun said the dual citizenship argued by the appellant was never brought before the tribunal. And um, meanwhile, uh, the Kanu Hisba is to marry off controversial TikToker Morja Kunya months after her arrest for corrupting the morals. Of the society in her video. Those were the words of the Hisba police. So the Kanu Hisba has announced plans to facilitate marriages for TikTokers in the state, including Morja Ibrahim Kunya, who was arrested early this year over alleged immorality. Uh, if you remember, the popular skit maker known for her controversial content was arrested at a hotel while trying to book rooms for guests who came for, from far and near. near uh, for her much publicized birthday bash. And according to the spokesperson of the State Police Command, SP Abdullahi Haruna Kiyawa, Murja's arrest followed complaints from clerics that she uses vulgar language and corrupts the morals of the society in her videos. This initiative was in unveiled during a meeting convened by the Commander General of Hisba, or Hisba Board, Sheikh Aminu Daurawa to offer guidance to TikTokers on improving their moral values. Morja and other popular TikTokers were invited to the Kano State Hisba Command's headquarters for potential rehabilitation on Monday, November 6, 2023. The invitation issued by the Deputy Commander General of Hisba, Dr. Mujahid Aminuddin, encouraged attendees to bring their educational and business certificates, ensuring their identities remain protected by covering their faces. The primary purpose for this gathering is to offer support to those interested in receiving assistance from the state governor, Abba Kabir Yusuf. The TikTokers in overwhelming numbers attended the meeting dressed in full traditional regalia and covering their faces with niqabs. Uh, speaking while unveiling this scheme, Sheikh Aminu Daurawa said, and I quote directly, 
We are willing to give you all the necessary support to live a sustainable life. Those of you that have fiancés uh, or are interested in marriage, we promise to organize a grand wedding and take responsibility for all the expenses. Uh, end of quote. He also advised uh, the popular TikTokers in attendance on how to improve their morals. And Sheikh Darwa said that all TikTokers use TikTok users who need capital support should write a business plan and submit it to the Hisba board. If they are satisfied with the information they have provided, the Kanu government will support them with capital. Well, this initiative, which has gained approval from Kanu state governor, is designed to assist youths in the region and promote moral growth. The TikTokers responded positively to the offer and engaged in discussions with senior Hisba officials. And to demonstrate their commitment to this endeavor, the Hisba provided 2,000 Naira transport fare to TikTokers. Okay, uh, well, I have mixed feelings about um, this report, but whatever it is, let's look at how it's going to pan out. Uh, someone was arrested because, uh, according to Hisba police, she was corrupting the morals of the people by what she posts on her TikTok um, handle. And then TikTokers are being offered money to empower them. That's good. TikTokers are also uh, encouraged to get married and that they are going to organize these marriages for them. Well, I don't know. However it is, we want peace in our country. We want uh, the moral decadence not to be the way it is anymore. But who are we to judge? Um, the morality or immorality is according to who? Is it according to the state, or according to the holy books, or according to the individuals, according to fundamental human rights, according to what? Uh, well, we have to define a lot of things and then take the right actions when we need to. Well, uh, that's uh, it on uh, Top Trending, some of the stories that we just wanted to bring to your notice in case you missed them. One of them will be a topic of discussion today, that's the NLC. Uh, in Broglio uh, happening right now in the country. Tuesday is just around the corner and if the strike is going to hold, uh, well at least it has given time for the elections to hold first. The elections will be held uh, this Saturday in Imo State where the problem arose from and then we'll also have that same election in uh, Bielsa and Kogi states, the governorship election that is. We've already had the states and uh, national assembly elections in those states, but uh, the governors need to be uh, elected as well on the 11th of November. This is an off-season election uh, for which INEC has been given 18 billion naira, apart from the money they were given for the conduct of the general elections in uh, February and March this year. They've been given 18 billion naira to do this election. We hope that this one will be an election that INEC will begin to redeem its image because no matter how much they say, um, the image has been battered in the international community, not just in Nigeria. Whether they are right in what they did or not, the perception of the people is that they did not do as well. So let them use this and redeem the image of INEC and, you know, uh, by implication, the image of Nigeria as well. We'll take a break and when we return we'll be looking at the papers. Stay with us.